Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Illuminati. Adam Weishaupt, founder of the Bavarian Illuminati. The Illuminati is a name given to several groups, both real and fictitious. Historically, the name usually refers to the Bavarian Illuminati, an Enlightenment era secret society founded on 1 May 1776. The society's goals were to oppose superstition, obscurantism, religious influence over public life, and abuses of state power. The order of the day, they wrote in the general statutes, is to put an end to the machinations of the purveyors of injustice, to control them without dominating them. The Illuminati, along with Freemasonry and other secret societies, were outlawed through edict by the Bavarian ruler, Charles Theodore, with the encouragement of the Roman Catholic Church. In 1784, 1785, 1787 and 1790, in the several years following, the group was vilified by conservative and religious critics who claimed that they continued underground and were responsible for the French Revolution. Many influential intellectuals and progressive politicians counted themselves as members, including Ferdinand of Brunswick and the diplomat Xavier von Zouak, who was the order's second in command. It attracted literary men such as Johann Wolfgang von Goethe and Johann Gottfried Herder, and the reigning Dukes of Gotha and Weimar. In subsequent use, Illuminati refers to various organizations which claim or are purported to have links to the original Bavarian Illuminati or similar secret societies. Though these links are unsubstantiated, they are often alleged to conspire to control world affairs, by masterminding events and planting agents in government and corporations, in order to gain political power and influence and to establish a new world order. Central to some of the most widely known and elaborate conspiracy theories, the Illuminati have been depicted as lurking in the shadows and pulling the strings and levers of power in dozens of novels, films, television shows, comics, video games, and music videos. Origins Owl of Minerva perched on a book was an emblem used by the Bavarian Illuminati in their minerval degree. Adam Weishaupt was a professor of canon law and practical philosophy at the University of Ingolstadt. He was the only non-clerical professor at an institution run by Jesuits, whose order had been dissolved in 1773. The Jesuits of Ingolstadt, however, still retained the purse strings and some power at the university, which they continued to regard as their own. Constant attempts were made to frustrate and discredit non-clerical staff, especially when course material contained anything they regarded as liberal or Protestant. Weishaupt became deeply anti-clerical, resolving to spread the ideals of the Enlightenment through some sort of secret society of like-minded individuals. Finding Freemasonry to be expensive and not open to his ideas, he founded his own society which was to have a gradal system based on Freemasonry, but his own agenda. His original name for the new order was Bund der Perfectibilisten, or Covenant of Perfectibility, later changing it because it sounded too strange. On 1 May 1776 Weishaupt and four students formed the Perfectibilists, taking the Owl of Minerva as their symbol. The members were to use aliases within the society. Weishaupt became Spartacus. Law students Massenhausen, Bauhof, Mertz, and Suter became respectively Ajax, Agathon, Tiberius, and Erasmus Rotterdamus. Weishaupt later expelled Suter for indolence. It was not until April 1778 that the order became the Illuminate Norden, or Order of Illuminati. After Weishaupt had seriously contemplated the B-Order, 
Massenhausen was initially the most active in expanding the society. Significantly, while studying in Munich shortly after the formation of the order, he recruited Xavier von Zouak, a former pupil of Weishaupt at the beginning of a significant administrative career. Massenhausen's enthusiasm soon became a liability in the eyes of Weishaupt, often attempting to recruit unsuitable candidates. Later, his erratic love life made him neglectful, and as Weishaupt passed control of the Munich group to Zawak, it became clear that Massenhausen had misappropriated subscriptions and intercepted correspondence between Weishaupt and Zawak. In 1778, Massenhausen graduated and took a post outside Bavaria, taking no further interest in the order. At this time, the order had a nominal membership of 12. With the departure of Massenhausen, Zawak immediately applied himself to recruiting more mature and important recruits. Most prized by Weishaupt was Hertel, a childhood friend and a canon of the Munich Frau Enkisch. By the end of summer 1778 the order had 27 members in five commands. Munich, Ingolstadt, Ravensburg, Freisingen, and Eichstede. During this early period, the order had three grades of novice, minival, and illuminated minival of which only the minival grade involved a complicated ceremony. In this the candidate was given secret signs and a password. A system of mutual espionage kept Weishaupt informed of the activities and character of all his members, his favorites becoming members of the ruling council, or Areopagus. Some novices were permitted to recruit, becoming insinuants. Christians of good character were actively sought, with Jews and pagans specifically excluded, along with women, monks, and members of other secret societies. Favored candidates were rich, docile, willing to learn, and aged 18 to 30. Transition Having, with difficulty, dissuaded some of his members from joining the Freemasons, Weishaupt decided to join the older order to acquire material to expand his own ritual. He was admitted to lodged prudence of the right of strict observance early in February 1777. His progress through the three degrees of Blue Lodge masonry taught him nothing of the higher degrees he sought to exploit. But in the following year a priest called Abbe Marotti informed Zoak that these inner secrets rested on knowledge of the older religion and the primitive church. Zoak persuaded Weishaupt that their own order should enter into friendly relations with Freemasonry, and obtain the dispensation to set up their own lodge. At this stage, the addition of the first three degrees of Freemasonry was seen as a secondary project. With little difficulty, a warrant was obtained from the Grand Lodge of Prussia called the Royal York for Friendship, and the new lodge was called Theodore of the Good Council, with the intention of flattering Charles Theodore, Elector of Bavaria. It was founded in Munich on 21 March 1779, and quickly packed with Illuminati. The first master, a man called R.A.D.L., was persuaded to return home to Baden, and by July Weishaupt's order ran the lodge. The next step involved independence from their Grand Lodge, by establishing Masonic relations with the Union Lodge in Frankfurt. Affiliated to the premier Grand Lodge of England, Lodge Theodore became independently recognized and able to declare its independence. As a new mother lodge, it could now spawn lodges of its own. The recruiting drive amongst the Frankfurt Masons also obtained the allegiance of Adolf Freier. Nig. Attempts at expansion. Nig's recruitment from German Freemasonry was far from random. He targeted the masters and wardens, the men who ran the lodges, and were often able to place the entire lodge at the disposal of the Illuminati. 
in Arkan, Baron de Witt, Master of Constancy Lodge, caused every member to join the Order. In this way, the Order expanded rapidly in Central and Southern Germany, and obtained a foothold in Austria, moving into the spring of 1782. The handful of students that had started the Order had swelled to about 300 members, only 20 of the new recruits being students. In Munich, the first half of 1782 saw huge changes in the government of Lodge Theodore. In February, Weishaupt had offered to split the lodge with the Illuminati going their own way, and the chapter taking any remaining traditionalists into their own continuation of Theodore. At this point, the chapter unexpectedly capitulated, and the Illuminati had complete control of lodge and chapter. In June, both lodge and chapter sent letters severing relations with Royal York citing their own faithfulness in paying for their recognition, and Royal York's failure to provide any instruction into the higher grades, the neglect of Costanza, failure to defend him from malicious charges or prevent his expulsion from Prussia, were also cited. They had made no effort to provide Costanza with the promised secrets and the Munich Masons now suspected that their brethren in Berlin relied on the mystical French. Higher grades which they sought to avoid, Lodge Theodore was now independent. The right of strict observance was now in a critical state. Its nominal leader was Prince Karl of Sodermanland, openly suspected of trying to absorb the right into the Swedish right, which he already controlled. The German lodges looked for leadership to Duke Ferdinand of Brunswick Wolfenbüttel. Suspicion turned to open contempt, when it transpired that Karl regarded the Stuart heir to the British throne as the true Grand Master, and the lodges of the strict observance all but ignored their Grand Master. This impasse led to the convent of Wilhelmsbad. Convent of Wilhelmsbad Prince Charles of Hesse Castle in the park at Wilhelmsbad, venue for the last convent of the strict observance, delayed from 15 October 1781. The last convention of the strict observance finally opened on 16 July 1782 in the spa town of Wilhelmsbad on the outskirts of Hanau, ostensibly a discussion of the future of the order. The 35 delegates knew that the strict observance in its current form was doomed, and that the convent of Wilhelmsbad would be a struggle over the pieces between the German mystics, under Duke Ferdinand of Brunswick Wolfenbüttel, and the host Prince Charles of Hesse Castle, and the Martinists, under John Baptiste Willemos. The only dissenting voices to mystical higher grades were Johann Joachim Christoph Bode who was horrified by Martinism, but whose proposed alternatives were as yet unformed, and Franz Dietrich von Dickfirth, a judge from Wetzlar, and master of the Joseph of the Three Helmets Lodge there, who was already a member of the Illuminati. Dickfirth publicly campaigned for a return to the basic three degrees of Freemasonry, which was the least likely outcome of the convention. The mystics already had coherent plans to replace the higher degrees. The lack of a coherent alternative to the two strains of mysticism allowed the Illuminati to present themselves as a credible option. Dipfirth, prompted and assisted by Nig, who now had full authority to act for the order, became their spokesman. Nig's original plan to propose an alliance between the two orders was rejected by Weishaupt, who saw no point in an alliance with a dying order. His new plan was to recruit the Masons opposed to the Templar higher degree of the strict observance. At the convent, Dipfirth blocked the attempts of Willemos and Hess to introduce their own higher grades by insisting that full details of such degrees be revealed to the delegates. The frustration of the German mystics led to their enrolling Count Colorat with the Illuminati, with a view to later affiliation. 
Dipfirth's own agenda was to replace all of the higher degrees with a single fourth degree, with no pretensions to further Masonic revelations. Finding no support for his plan, he left the convent prematurely, writing to the Areopagus that he expected nothing good of the assembly. In an attempt to satisfy everybody, the convent of Wilhelmsbad achieved little. They renounced the Templar origins of their ritual, while retaining the Templar titles, trappings, and administrative structure. Charles of Hesse and Ferdinand of Brunswick remained at the head of the order, but in practice, the lodges were almost independent. The Germans also adopted the name of the French Order of Willemos. Les Chevaliers Bienfaisants de la Cité Saint and some Martinist mysticism was imported into the first three degrees, which were now the only essential degrees of Freemasonry. Crucially, individual lodges of the order were now allowed to fraternize with lodges of other systems. The new Scottish grade, introduced with the Leon ritual of Willemos, was not compulsory. Each province and prefecture was free to decide what, if anything, happened after the three craft degrees. Finally, in an effort to show that something had been achieved, the convent regulated at length on etiquette, titles, and a new numbering for the provinces. Zenith Although their hopes of mass recruitment through Freemasonry had been frustrated, the Illuminati continued to recruit well at an individual level. In Bavaria, the succession of Charles Theodore initially led to a liberalization of attitudes and laws. But the clergy and courtiers, guarding their own power and privilege, persuaded the weak-willed monarch to reverse his reforms and Bavaria's repression of liberal thought returned. This reversal led to a general resentment of the monarch and the church among the educated classes, which provided a perfect recruiting ground for the Illuminati. A number of Freemasons, from Prudence Lodge disaffected by the Martinist rites of the Chevaliers Bianfaisants, joined Lodge Theodore who set themselves up in a gardened mansion which contained the library of liberal literature. Illuminati circles in the rest of Germany expanded. While some had only modest gains, the circle in Mainz almost doubled from 31 to 61 members. Reaction to state Catholicism led to gains in Austria, and footholds were obtained in Warsaw, Pressburg, Tyrol, Milan, and Switzerland. The total number of verifiable members at the end of 1784 is around 650. Weishaupt and Hertel later claimed a figure of 2,500. The higher figure is largely explained by the inclusion of members of Masonic lodges that the Illuminati claimed to control. But it is likely that the names of all the Illuminati are not known and the true figure lies somewhere between 650 and 2,500. The importance of the order lay in its successful recruitment of the professional classes, churchmen, academics, doctors and lawyers, and its more recent acquisition of powerful benefactors, Karl August, Grand Duke of Saxe Weimar Eisenach, Ernest II, Duke of Saxe Gotha Altenburg with his brother, and later successor August, Karl Theodor Anton Maria von Dahlberg, Governor of Erfurt, Duke Ferdinand of Brunswick Wolfenbüttel, his chief assistant in Masonic matters, Johann Friedrich von Schwartz, and Count Metternich of Koblenz were all enrolled in Vienna. Count Brigido, Governor of Galicia, Count Leopold Kolorat, Chancellor of Bohemia, with his vice-chancellor Baron Kressel, Count Palfi von Erdid, Chancellor of Hungary, Count Bamfi, Governor and Provincial Grand Master of Transylvania, Count Stadion, Ambassador to London, and Baron von Swieten, Minister of Public Education, also joined. There were notable failures. Johann Kasperlavater, the Swiss poet and theologian, 
rebuffed Nike. He did not believe the order's humanitarian and rationalist aims were achievable by secret means. He further believed that a society's drive for members would ultimately submerge its founding ideals. Christoph Friedrich Nikolai, the Berlin writer and bookseller, became disillusioned after joining. He found its aims chimeric and thought that the use of Jesuit methods to achieve their aims was dangerous. He remained in the order, but took no part in recruitment. Conflict with Rosicrucians At all costs, Weishaupt wished to keep the existence of the order secret from the Rosicrucians, who already had a considerable foothold in German Freemasonry. While clearly Protestant, the Rosicrucians were anything but anti-clerical, pro-monarchic, and held views clearly conflicting with the Illuminati vision of a rationalist state run by philosophers and scientists. The Rosicrucians were not above promoting their own brand of mysticism with fraudulent seances. A conflict became inevitable as the existence of the Illuminati became more evident and as prominent Rosicrucians, and mystics with Rosicrucian sympathies, were actively recruited by Nig and other over-enthusiastic helpers. Kolo Rat was already a high-ranking Rosicrucian, and the mystic Prince Charles of Hesse Castle had a very low opinion of the rationalist higher grades of the Illuminati. The Prussian Rosicrucians, under Johann Christoph von Wollner, began a sustained attack on the Illuminati. Wollner had a specially engineered room in which he convinced potential patrons of the effectiveness of Rosicrucian magic, and his order had acquired effective control of the three globes and its attached lodges. Through this mouthpiece, the Illuminati were accused of atheism and revolutionary tendencies. In April 1783 Frederick the Great informed Charles of Hesse that the Berlin Lodges had documents belonging to the Minervals or Illuminati which contained appalling material, and asked if he had heard of them. All Berlin Masons were now warned against the order, which was now accused of Socinianism, and of using the liberal writings of Voltaire and others alongside the tolerance of Freemasonry, to undermine all religion. In November 1783 the Three Globes described the Illuminati as a Masonic sect which sought to undermine Christianity and turn Freemasonry into a political system. Their final anathema, in November 1784, refused to recognize any Illuminati as Freemasons. In Austria, the Illuminati were blamed for anti-religious pamphlets that had recently appeared. The Rosicrucians spied on Joseph von Sonnenfels and other suspected Illuminati, and their campaign of denunciation within Freemasonry completely shut down Illuminati recruitment. In Tyrol, the Bavarian Illuminati, whose existence was already known to the Rosicrucians, from an informant, were further betrayed by the reckless actions of Ferdinand Maria Bader and Aria Pagit, who now joined the Rosicrucians. Shortly after his admission it was made known to his superiors that he was one of the Illuminati, and he was informed that he could not be a member of both organizations. His letter of resignation stated that the Rosicrucians did not possess secret knowledge and ignored the truly illuminated, specifically identifying Lodge Theodore as an Illuminati Lodge. Barul and Robeson Between 1797 and 1798, Augustin Barul's memoirs illustrating the history of Jacobinism and John Robeson's proofs of a conspiracy publicized the theory that the Illuminati had survived and represented an ongoing international conspiracy. This included the claim that it was behind the French Revolution. Both books proved to be very popular, spurring reprints and paraphrases by others. A prime example of this is proofs of the real existence and dangerous tendency of Illuminism. 
by Reverend Seth Payson, published in 1802. Some of the response to this was critical. For example, Jean Joseph Mooneers on the influence attributed to philosophers, Freemasons, and to the Illuminati on the Revolution of France. The works of Robertson and Barul made the way to the United States and across New England, Reverend Jedediah Morse and others gave sermons against the Illuminati. Their sermons were printed, and the matter was followed in newspapers. Concern died down in the first decade of the 1800s, although it revived from time to time in the anti-Masonic movement of the 1820s and 30s. Modern Illuminati Several recent and present-day fraternal organizations claim to be descended from the original Bavarian Illuminati and openly use the name of Illuminati. Some of these groups use a variation on the name of the Illuminati order in the name of their own organizations, while others, such as the Ordo Templi Orientis, have Illuminati as a level within their organization's hierarchy. However, there is no evidence that these present-day groups have amassed significant political power or influence, and most, rather than trying to remain secret, promote unsubstantiated links to the Bavarian Illuminati as a means of attracting membership. Conspiracy Theory the Illuminati did not long survive their suppression in Bavaria, and their further mischief and plottings in the work of Barul and Robertson must be considered as the invention of the writers. However, conspiracy theorists and writers such as Mark Dice have argued that the Illuminati have survived to this day. Many conspiracy theories propose that world events are being controlled and manipulated by a secret society calling itself the Illuminati. Conspiracy theorists have claimed that many notable people were or are members of the Illuminati. Presidents of the United States are a common target for such claims. Other theorists contend that a variety of historical events were orchestrated by the Illuminati. From the French Revolution, the Battle of Waterloo and the assassination of U.S. President John F. Kennedy, to an alleged communist plot to hasten the New World Order by infiltrating the Hollywood film industry. Some conspiracy theorists claim that the Illuminati observe satanic rituals. Novels The Illuminati, or fictitious modern groups called the Illuminati, play a central role in the plots of many novels, for example the Illuminatus trilogy, by Robert Shea and Robert Anton Wilson. They also make an appearance in Foucault's Pendulum, by Umberto Eco and Angels and Demons by Dan Brown, a mixture of historical fact and established conspiracy theory, or pure fiction, is used to portray them. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by Wikivd Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.